This is the ninth video in this series, and in the last video, we were finishing up on the feet, and we can now move forward on that and finish adding the toes. So we'll zoom in on that and use the number pad key. Eight to rotate that around a bit. And all we really need to do, and this is quite easy, is duplicate the lower foot left bone for each of the toes. So we'll shift duplicate it, grab it along X, and place it into the big toe. Pull the tip of that bone towards the tip of the toe. Duplicate that bone again along X and place it into the other toe. And again, pull the tip down to the tip of the toe. And just repeat that for all of the toes. It's really quite easy. This one will need to pull the tip in a bit. And one last time, duplicate along X. And suddenly I'm wondering if I remember to limit to the X axis on this bone. So to err on the side of caution, I'm just going to erase the bone and do it again. I'll duplicate that. Limit X and pull the tip into the bone. And that's it, as simple as that. And I have no intention of animating individual bones. <clears throat> I'm not even going to bother renaming these bones because they're really just something that I'm going to hide later on anyways. Um, looking at the bones in pose mode, they already have their constraints added because they were added from a bone that had a copy rotation constraint added to it. And the only purpose of these bones is that so when I parent the rigging to the mesh, none of my toes end up stuck to the ground. And I'll also get a nice square deformation across this portion of the foot when I bend it for something like a walk cycle. Next thing to look at is the head of our model. In order to do that, I'm going to need the eyes. So I'm going to select my eyes, use the number pad 2 key, and rotate backwards until the eyes are lying on their back. The red line will appear when that occurs. When the red line appears, they'll be lying on their back. I'll zoom in on that. And I've never tried using a mirror on the eye bones, but I'm going to try. And just to, out of curiosity to see how that works out. So I'm only going to add the eye bone to the left side. And if all goes well, when I mirror, the right bone will land in the right spot for the left eye. It's really just a matter of curiosity. I'll go into my layer with my rigging, select it take the rigging into edit mode and add the bone for the left eye and that bone I'll call eye left and make a child of head and if all goes well that will play out and make for a nice a nice even eyeballs on both sides of the body. So I'll look at that from a side view and go into edit mode. Select the tip of that bone and pull it in towards the eye so it's not so big. You could also use adding a jawbone. So I'll snap my cursor to the root of the head, add a bone. Grab the tip of that bone, pull it down to just under the lip. Snap my cursor to that. Use period to change my cur my pivot to 3D cursor. Select that bone. 
scale it, and that will pull it towards the cursor. And I'll grab the root of that bone and locate it a little bit better so that it's in a rotation point suitable for a jaw. And I'll name that bone jaw. And make it child of head. Then I'm going to duplicate the jawbone, shift D, and place it in the area of the upper lip, just above the upper lip. And this bone is going to be a placeholder, it doesn't need to be that big. It already holds parentage with the head because it's a duplicate of a bone that was child of the head. And this bone I'm going to call PH with capital letters for placeholder and lip and will be child of head. There's another placeholder bone to add here, and that would be in the eyebrow. The construction of the eyebrow is in a way separate from the rest of the mesh. It has no adjoining vertices or lines or faces, and I find when parenting it that that becomes problematic. So what I'm going to do First off, I'll turn off my manipulator so I can place my cursor. Is What I'm going to do is add a bone to the eyebrow. And I'll grab the tip of that bone and just manipulate it around it, the eyebrow. Change my pivot back to median point. And orient that bone so that it's inlaid in the eyebrow. This bone will again be a placeholder bone. So PH I left. And it will just assign weight to the eyebrow and make it move in conjunction with the head. So the bone will be child of head. In the location of the ear, I find that the ear tends to rotate too much, so I'm going to place a bone there to deal with that. And again, it's going to be another placeholder bone. So I'll add a bone there, shrink it down, and locate it a little bit into the ear so that it will assign a weight to the ear, and when I rotate the jaw, will stop the rotation in an area where it assigns its weight and is another placeholder bone to help control the rotation of the jaw. The upper lip bone is a placeholder bone to help Blender to decide to make a favorable weight dispersion in the area of the mouth in which when I rotate the jaw bone it will allow a mesh deformation to make the mouth function properly and I'm not going to demonstrate this but I do suggest that people play around with these placeholder bones and try parenting the rigging without them and see what happens especially this lip bone because this lip bone has a lot to uh, show about the way that blender will assign weights during the parenting of the rigging anyways we can name this bone PH ear left make a child of head and that's about it um, I'm out of time for this video in the next video we'll come back finish up the rigging mirror it for the other side of the body and hopefully get around to doing our first parenting so that'll be in the next video and until then happy modeling